Hey, welcome to Money Club Mondays. It's November, November 6, 2023. So the year's flying by. We're coming up to the holidays where everything kind of slows down a little bit. So now's definitely the time to make sure uh, we're preparing, setting goals, getting ready for uh, January 1, 2024, the new year to kick off. But with that said, there still is a lot of time until the new year, a lot of business to be had, uh, a lot of real estate going on, a lot of opportunities popping out right now. So we're going to keep these things rolling every single Monday. So if you're new here, this is Money Club Mondays, part of Private Money Club. We do this webinar every single Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern. And the recording is placed a couple of days later on the YouTube at Private Money Club channel. So make sure you check out YouTube at Private Money Club to watch uh, catch up on any shows that you missed and also watch past episodes of Money Club Monday. So this is a weekly show where we do education on private money. So we talk about private money borrowing, private money lending, uh, best practices, uh, you know, different ways to protect yourself on both sides of the coin. Uh, we also use this as a platform to introduce and bring you opportunities. So a lot of you might know, or maybe you're new here, but Private Money Club is an online platform and mastermind that connects uh, borrowers and lenders, primarily in the real estate space. However, there are other, uh, other opportunities that pop up uh, through Private Money Club as well. So just for as an example, uh, just yesterday, we finished up, we wrapped up yesterday evening or yesterday afternoon, our Money School Essentials three-day training. Was anybody on today that was on over the weekend with us over the last three days. I'm just curious if anybody got some value out of that. I see some familiar names on here, Tess and Gold and Jay and uh, Chris. Appreciate you guys being on. So it was an awesome one though, right? Did you guys learn anything new? Kind of get, get exposed to some new opportunities, things like that. So we actually had a lot of fun. We brought on people that were flipping equipment. Uh, we have people that are coming on with opportunities to invest in semi-trucks in the trucking industry. We had several different types of real estate, uh, everything from developments, uh, new developments to uh, flipping mobile homes to private money lending and, and everything in between. So it's an awesome three-day training. I appreciate everybody. So I'm fired up from that, you know, kind of ready to rock and roll here. So what I decided to do was for this Money Club Monday, we wanted to kind of keep that opportunity train going. So I know a lot of people lately have been taking back control of their money. So they're following us. They're they're putting money in infinite banking policies, especially designed whole life policies, taking control, taking, a, taking advantage of uninterrupted, guaranteed, tax-free compounding returns. A lot of people taking back control of their retirement accounts, putting that money into self-directed Roth and traditional IRAs, checkbook control, LLC accounts. Um, I've even seen some people moving over HSA funds uh, to self-direct. So a lot of people controlling their money, taking advantage of things like HELOCs, first lien mortgages, home equity loan agreements, things of that nature. And once you have control of your money, now we got to find opportunities to deploy that capital in the lowest risk possible. So uh, over the weekend, like I mentioned, we, we taught all kinds of different strategies, everything from basically risk-free investing by stacking bonds, taking advantage of the infinite banking concept uh, to different real estate uh, opportunities, like I mentioned before. So what we're going to do today is we're going to keep this ball rolling and I've invited um, some of our friends on. We've been affiliate referral partners with uh, Equity and Health Lanthro Investors, Origin Clear now for know, several years. I've been uh, working with Vendi and her team, and um, they do an awesome job. If, if any of you have worked with Jerry Feta um, and his team, I know they do a lot with, uh, with, with Lanthro also, but I really like them because everything they do has a purpose. So they have some really cool opportunities and 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 different ways to deploy capital, and they're going to present one of those today. But I really like because everything they do has a purpose behind it. It's it's made to either help somebody else out or you know help a community that might not otherwise get help and and and, and underserved communities basically. And so I absolutely love that. And so I've asked them to come on today to. Uh, present a new opportunity that that they have through Origin Clear. So I believe we have Riggs um, Eckleberry, who actually I don't think Riggs, I've met you personally yet. So looking forward to meeting you here today and, and hearing what you have to say. So how are you, sir? I'm very well. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Well, like I said, I've you know I've, I've been working with Vendy for a while now, and and your whole team, and you guys really doing amazing stuff. So I'm excited to hear what you have going today. With I believe you have a new offering coming up here, so I'm kind of pumped to hear about it. Excellent, excellent. Well, let's just jump right into it then. That's so right. obviously, the world is moving more and more 
into commodity-based finance. Uh, this is because we've done mass, a massive job of inflating the, the, uh, the money supply. And so commodities matter more and more. And obviously, you know that from real estate. Well, there's a, a new commodity that's just exiting a government monopoly, and it's called water. And mainly what I mean is, is water treatment, the treatment of dirty water, which we kind of take for granted. It's like, yeah, the city will take care of that and so forth. But the problem is they're not. And so as a result, there's a lot of decentralization going on. More and more businesses are doing their own water treatment, their dirty water treatment. They're still getting fresh water from the city. That's not an issue. And this is opening up a big opportunity for built-in-place water treatment systems. And what we've come up with is a way to connect investors to that asset. Much like, I don't know if you've ever heard of the, the uh, Master Limited Partnerships in oil wells. So that's a way for investors to invest in a bucket of energy properties. And it's become a very big space, about $300 billion space. We are very early stage in the exact same thing, but for water. And you might say that uh, the very first players are just showing up in this. And what I'd like to do, um, Stephen, if you have, if you don't mind, is I'm going to go ahead and uh, quickly run through a presentation. So I think that'll tell the, the top line. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be perfect. Perfect. Let's do it. So here we go. My company is Origin Clear, and we've been a penny stock for 16 years. And if you look at our stock graph, it shows. Uh, what we've done with that um, during that time is uh, we've been super, super early in uh, advanced water trends. And now the trends have caught up. And we created a division called Water On Demand, which uh, we were just able to announce on October 24th is going to be merging with a NASDAQ-based blank check company. Now, those of you who don't know, blank check companies or special purpose acquisition corporations, SPACs, basically are, it's just a big treasure chest and they're looking for a company to buy. Well, long story short, we created a subsidiary that is called Water On Demand that is uh, has achieved a $32 million valuation in this NASDAQ company. And that is right now, um, it's basically ours to screw up because it is a definitive agreement. It's going to the SEC and we will be hopefully a NASDAQ company by something like March. But let me tell you what this is about. What's, what's the special sauce here? Well, first of all, you need to know that state of wastewater in the US is pretty horrible. Here's a graph that shows that the funding gap is approaching $100 billion a year. Now, we still think that's a lot of money. <laughs> I know that there's a lot of money being put out there, but you know, to actually underspend by $100 billion means that you get problems. And on top of it, remember that a bunch of manufacturing is coming back to the US. These will be highly efficient AI-driven factories. And there's not going to be the, the ability to service them for their water needs. So even the uh, federal funding is well short. And what this means is commercial users are on their own. And big water inflation, uh, water, infl uh, water rate inflation now exceeds college tuition inflation. That's how bad it is. It still doesn't cover it. And so we come to the idea of private water. And that's happening right there. You see the uh, the blue and the teal uh, area graphs are the services and equipment deals, which are the private deals. So they're growing super fast. And so we decided to pioneer water as an asset. Okay. Now, what that means is you can take a look at this little 3D here, and it shows many different places where the water is being treated. And so you have a much smaller central plant. And this is good because it means that human beings will get better water because industry and agriculture, which take up 90% of all water needs, will be off the grid. And this reduces the burden. And they love it. Why? Because they can control their own costs through inflation. I mean, through their own uh, internal equipment. Number two, they can reuse water, which they can't do right now. Number three, they are not you know, stuck with the utility, giving them a hard time. So they have control and they love it. What does it mean? Uh, now, it's all very, this is a great idea, except you, you got to scale down the technology. You got to be an expert. And here's the third thing. You want to eliminate the capital needs. And this is where the investors come in. So we created three uh, divisions, which deal with those three things. 
Let me get into it. The whole idea of water on demand is the idea that I'm currently getting my water treatment by, treated by the city. I want to do it myself. Well, why should I spend a million dollars? Why don't I just sign a service contract with a private provider? And that's what's happening right now. These businesses are able to sign long-term service contracts and just pay by the gallon. And we take care of everything. Plus we have the engineers, you name it. Here's that magic quadrant, which shows how wonderful we are. I won't get into it too deeply. The key here is you got to have the technology. And since 2018, we have been developing a division that is based on patented technology for miniaturizing what's these big, big water plant systems down into you know the corner of a brewery or whatever, right? So um, it's got great value, all that good stuff. But we're already doing it for breweries, housing developments, um, uh, concentrated animal farms, uh, mobile home parks, which as you know, if you're in the mobile home park business, it's an area that really needs better wastewater treatment, freeway rest stops, RV campgrounds, warehouses, you name it. This is an idea of what it looks like. It's all containerized, nice and neat. Business is the same thing, which is called a pump station. But what's great is we build them at the fabrication sites, truck them over, drop them in the ground, plug them in, and off she goes. A bunch of testimonials, I won't get into that, but this is available uh, on request. All you got to do is send uh, an email to invest at originclear.com and we'll send you this presentation. All right, now, MWS since 2018 has blown up. In fact, just in uh, since 2021, we've had a, more than seven times growth. So uh, why? Because the world is moving towards self-treatment of their water. Now, Progressive Water is our other division. We acquired it in 2015. They've been around forever. They have huge, huge customers, most of whom we can't tell you who they are, but it's all custom. So this is really just an engineering capability. And they too have, for example, 2019 to 2022, they nearly tripled their revenue, right? Combining them all, we have, this is a complicated slide that says we, have, we, we basically combine them all into Water Demand Inc. Origin Clear is the largest single shareholder. We have currently have more than 50% of it and it's going to the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at what some charts look like. Give you an idea, uh, over the years, we've been noodling around $4 million, a million dollars a quarter, basically. Things took off in 2022, and they're going up from there. So doing great organically, that's combination of all these. Now, I've been talking about this water on demand concept, but you notice that it comes in raw, kind of late, but that, that's that green mark, right? Why? Because we really want to take our time with it. You know, there's no rush. But meanwhile, we're building the, the, the capital for it, and that's where the investors come in. Usually, of course, we'll tell you the profits are great. That's all good. And this is where the water on demand ramp up occurs, where we start really kicking it into high gear. Now, where it gets exciting is once we're on the NASDAQ, we are going to acquire companies rapidly. And I won't get into the, the nitty gritty of it, but the bottom line is that instead of $32 million a year in 2026, we're uh, about well, more than seven times as much uh, because of the acquisitions. As you can see, that green thing, it just takes over. Acquisitions are happening. I won't get too much deeper into this because it's, you know, this is uh, something that we can discuss in a one-on-one. -on -one. But basically what we're talking about here is, number one, we play in decentralized water, which we've been doing since 2016, but nobody was listening. Now, even CNN is saying that it's needed. So we, we've, we've come right into the tornado, you might, might say, and we are providing... Um, systems to customers who are paying for it. And the next generation is where we pay for it and the customer just pays us by the gallon, which by the way, if you know all about services, they're much more profitable than products. So this is water as a service. Now, where does it come into the investing opportunity? It's very simple. And that is that we have an offering that enables investors, accredited investors to jump in and get a percentage of the profits from the, that basket of water systems for as long as those things are out there, plus a huge amount of equity warrants because you always want to have the opportunity in case things take off to buy more and also shares in that future NASDAQ company. So it's a very attractive offering. Uh, you know, we think that it's, um, yeah, it, it, well, a lot of people have bought into it. Currently, it's a 
it's a very limited $20 million fundraise of which, which we've already raised about $8 million. So um, with that, uh, you know, we, we have uh, an opportunity for investors to be in on the beginning of this. There's players at the high end that are dealing with farm and so forth. That's great. That's all the big PE funds will take care of that. But we are dedicated to working with the everyday accredited investor. And our rule is that this water fund is going to be open to the retail investor. Well, that's it, you know, in a nutshell. And uh, Stephen, I'm open to, to questions. If anybody has any questions, just throw them in the Q&A box or in the chat box over here and uh, we'll get Riggs to answer those. I haven't seen any pop up yet, but um, you know, just a couple of things that you said it's for accredited investors. What, what's like a minimum investment you'd be looking for from somebody? The unit is $100,000, but our rule um, is to, if you're accredited, put in what you think you're, you, you're not going to freak out about because our experience is you'll invest again. It's a good experience. You'll do well. You'll see some good multiples. And so we're perfectly happy to break up that unit. Um, the key is, is to participate now. Um, and I might add something that's going on in the background, which is also that we are open to offering notes that convert into the eventual shares on the NASDAQ company. It's not something I can discuss very publicly, but um, if you end up talking to Ken Berenger, and I'm going to put that uh, slide up on the screen as well, then he will tell you about it. You actually have to sign a non-disclosure agreement, but um, I think it's well worth looking at. So what I'm going to do is um, put this up on screen, contact info, and uh, please feel free to connect with Ken. Okay, cool. So that anybody that's interested, this is how they would go ahead and, and get a hold of you guys. Correct. So go straight into uh, the Calendly, which is oc.gold slash Ken, email investor origin clear, send a, send a phone call. The key here is that we can go super deep on detail, but the important is thing that uh, Stephen people have to understand is this is a new asset class. And anytime you have a, a pre-IPO situation in a new asset class, it's like Amazon in 1999, right? It's like kind of the time to get it, right? That's what this is about. Okay, cool. Okay. So just, uh, just a little bit of the details of the investment. So um, so is this a long-term investment? Like when would they expect to get money returned or what kind of would the re projected returns look like? Um, it's just a little bit different than what a typical deal is that we do, like on, on, on you know, with like direct lending on a private real estate transaction or, you know, a, a private fund or something of that nature. So can you get a little bit more about the investment itself? That's a very good question. So it's basically three parts. The first part is <clears throat> that the capital that we invest in these water systems generates 25% net profit to you on a pooled basis. And you have uh, a lien rights to enforce that royalty based on the asset because we continue to own that asset. Number two is shares in Origin Clear itself. That is currently a multiple. In other words, it's more than 100% of what you've invested. I'm not going to tell you the multiple because it's at a certain level now that it's going down on a, it's getting less, less and less generous. Uh, with that come some warrants. Like I say, those are opportunities to buy more. And finally, shares that we grant you in that pre NASDAQ company. Now that's all in an analysis that we prepare for you. So um, it, we, we have a beautiful spreadsheet that we pull up and we get into the usual uh, multiples, ROIs, et cetera, that, that you're accustomed to seeing they're on that spreadsheet. Okay, cool. Okay. So, so that's actually, something I, I'm seeing some comments here. Um, and why rush through the presentation? Providing more details would be helpful. <laughs> you guys are the opposite of what I run into usually. This is cool. <laughs> that's excellent. Well, okay. Uh, by the way, I want to mention that you guys do it on Monday. I do it every Thursday night, a CEO yeah. briefing that gets into the nitty gritty of the company, the latest developments, et cetera. Uh, I'll just go to oc.gold slash CEO, or just go to originclear.com and you'll get a pop-up inviting you to it. And that is in-depth, plus we take comments, et cetera. And there's a replay in case you don't make the 8 p.m. EST. So um, that's what that's about. And um, well, the real question is, Stephen, how much time do I have to continue to dis discuss this? Yeah, we, we go for an hour. So we have to to another 30 minutes if, if, if you have time to stick around a little bit more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Of course. Um, 
And, and I do have a couple of questions coming through. Maybe I'll hit a couple of these and then we can maybe get back into some of the details. But um, so they were just, Mark was just asking, can you describe the ballpark pricing for the miniature self-contained wastewater systems? At the low end, they're about 100,000. At the high end, about 2 million. Uh, medians around a quarter million dollars. And you get, uh, for example, some very good um, examples. In fact, I may even play a video of one of the sites uh, right now, for example, there's a big land boom going on, as most of you know, north of Dallas, from Dallas to the Oklahoma border. And we that's going so fast that the developers are unable to provision sewage for those uh, developments. And so uh, we have actually um, a case study of that, um, which is on YouTube, that I can pull up pretty pretty easily and quickly play that for you. And it'll give you an idea of what these things look like. Yeah, yeah, right, right ahead. And we got a couple more questions when we come back, so it'd be perfect. Well, excellent. I'm going to put the link in the chat box also where you guys can register for that Thursday evening, a uh, little bit more detail webinar. Sure, sure. Okay, let me just let me just uh, go ahead and share this. Good afternoon. This is Dan Early coming to you live from Munson Point located just outside of beautiful Denison, Texas, located in the North Texas region, just south of the Oklahoma border. I'm on site today at our Veriskid 10K MBR wastewater treatment system. This is a system that progressive water treatment through the modular water systems product line, we were able to deliver this system to this particular residential development. What is really unique about this particular project is, is that it's an, a membrane bioreactor type of technology. It is our plug and play system. It is a system that as soon as it's offloaded and as soon as you connect a pipe in and a pipe out and make your power connection, you're immediately ready to water up the unit and to put it into operation treating domestic wastewater. This particular system has been online now for about 60 days and uh, the contract operator that's working for the developers is beyond thrilled. Jimmy Moon, he is the uh, TCEQ licensed operator for this particular facility. And Jimmy was telling me earlier today that uh, he is blown away by the treatment capability uh, that the Averiska 10K MBR provides. Uh, Jimmy's got 35 years of wastewater operations experience. And uh, Jimmy has seen a lot of different wastewater treatment applications over the course of his illustrious career. Jimmy is very, very, very pleased with the simplicity of the operations. The Averiskid 10K MBR system is fully autonomous. We have our master control panel that is operating and monitoring and self-adjusting the treatment system in real time. And then it has our remote access capability where we and our, our process engineers and our back office can log in and can operate and track and, and assist in process operations with uh, Jimmy Moon. This particular system is a very easy to deploy system. It does not require a lot of heavy excavation, does not require a lot of heavy pipe work. It is a fully self-contained advanced treatment system. Because it's modular, we can place a second, a third, or a fourth module in parallel to it, and we can double, triple, and quadruple the treatment capability. The system is capable of treating to a level that is suitable for reuse and reclamation. That would include irrigation, toilet reflush, dust control, water features, landscape water features, and maybe on a project site. That is what uh, this project represents, and uh, we are very, very pleased, very excited about our opportunities here in North Texas. North Texas, from basically the Dallas Metroplex, north to the Oklahoma border, is undergoing an absolute development boom. Major corporations have relocated into North Texas, and that is absolutely driving the need for water and sewer. The localities, they are unable to keep up with it, and so a lot of the developers, especially in this neck of the woods, are turning to solutions like this that allow uh, companies like Modular Water Systems and Progressive Water Treatment, allows us to deliver solutions to them to solve their water and sewer needs. That allows them to tap into the contingent future development value that is with the real estate that is in this, that's located in this region. So check your maps, look at uh, where Denison, Texas and Sherman are located, look at its proximity to Dallas, and just imagine that whole corridor expanding and growing with the influx of development and business and industry that's relocating to this region. And I'll just um, show, show, play this short one, which is an actual engineer. Mark asked, do we have installations in California? Not really. We're mostly Southeast at this point is what we're looking at right now. 
So I'm a consulting engineer here at Columbia Engineering. I've been here for 26 years. I head up all of our uh, company's land development work throughout the southeast. We've been in business for 60 years. We're a full service engineering firm, so occasionally we have need for adding lift stations to some of our development. Ordinarily, when you have sewage from a development, it, it drains via gravity to a gravity sewer system. Oftentimes, that's not possible on sites because the elevation of the sewer, for instance, may be too high. And so to resolve that problem, the sewage drains into a lift station, which then pumps it to the gravity system. It allows a site that may otherwise not be developable, be developable for a reasonable cost. Really just weren't satisfied with the level of service that we were getting from some of those designers. Uh, the designers seemed to just sort of cobble together these lift stations using old school technology. Uh, required really a lot of work on our end to coordinate everything. And then we'd get through the construction process and oftentimes the items that the engineer had specced maybe weren't readily available, resulting in change orders and so forth. I was introduced to Dan Early and his group with Progressive Water. He just really had this cool concept of a turnkey package where they included all of the design and produced a modular plant that was shipped to the construction site, built to the spec. All the contractor had to do is dig a hole, pour some concrete, set it, and plug everything in. So we gave Dan's group a shot on a project we had down in Panhandle. I really liked Dan's idea of, of look, I'm just gonna take this problem, I'm gonna run with it, and give Columbia the easy button. And he, he and his group certainly did that. Dan and his group have a knack for taking very complicated ideas and putting them in layman's terms for our clients who are ultimately paying the bill and don't necessarily understand the distinction of the different types of lift stations and costs involved. Honestly, I was amazed. I was really looking for the easy button so that we can focus on doing what we do best, which is not lift station design or managing our consultants. Concrete has a design life of about 10 to 20 years and then requires some pretty significant maintenance to go in there and refurbish that wet well area. The modular water system product is a polyethylene tank and it has a 100 year design life. And so that's just one of the many distinctions between a traditional type of system and uh, the modular water system. Yeah, I think as, as news of this spreads and it becomes more widespread and um, public utilities, but also private landowners uh, realize the affordability of this product, the great construction and reliability of it, and the ease of installation, I think it's going to become much more prevalent. We were just very pleased with the, the service that we got, the responsiveness that we got, no headache, and uh, we'll be using them in the future. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. So, you know, here's, here's the thing. And I, I see some great, great questions in the Q and A, and then I'm going to go back to the presentation uh, and sort of dive in a little bit deeper. Uh, Michael asks, what do you charge for a gallon of water and what cities do you install in? All right. So this is uh, strategically what we decided to do is to service the part of the market currently that is able to pay. Why? because they're able to pay. <laughs> so um, this enables us to move very quickly. And this has been our 7X, literally 7X Im improvement in business from modular water systems alone in about three years. Why? Because there's pent up demand for that. And so what is these graphs that I'm going to get it back to in a second are really relying on current um, trends, not future trends. Now, water on demand itself is... I push it off a little bit into the future, and here's why. The people that our companies have normally spoken to are already putting stuff out to bid. If they put it out to bid, that means they figured out the finance on it. It's like when a developer wants to go find contractors, well, he or she has already found the financing for the, the, the project. What you want to do, if I put it again in real estate terms, is get to the developer long before they've tried to figure out the financing and say, hey, guess what? We can do it on a per-use basis. So... What I'm saying is that um, we're really focusing on growing these divisions and doing the acquisitions to build them up. And then the, um, the water on demand project um, is developed by going deep into the marketplace and talking to consulting engineers when they first hear about a project, a problem really, that's unsolved problem that somebody can't figure out. And then that's when we can say, hey, uh, you can have access to capital. And so we structured the offering like that. Yes, you get um, a percentage of net profit. And until the systems are in place, you we, we keep the money working, you get you get um, uh, a 
healthy chunk of that. So you actually make decent money on that. But here's the interesting part. Origin Clear, which you're going to get more than 100% of your investment in shares of Origin Clear, owns more than 50% of a company that's now going to the NASDAQ. So there's an arbitrage there. And um, number two, we also offer shares in that company. And so this is where I'm going to come back to these um, this presentation and kind of show you the growth opportunity based on what we already do no fantasy, no outside the box stuff, it's genuine growth. Breaking news, this just in. Are you sick of having your money lying around not doing anything? Well, we've got the solution for you, privatemoneyclub.com. Back to you, Chris. Now, a very good question from uh, Caddy Phone. Uh, thank, you for, thank you for the compliment. Do you expect or know if this technology will enable building in places with water limitations? This is precisely good for that. Why? Because there's no way when you when a business just sends its water to the city, that's it. Your opportunity is to reuse it to to recycle it go away, right? Because America's not America's built with single, just like energy, it's built with a one way system. It just blasts it out, right? Same thing with water treatment. But if I'm treating my own water, now I can get more turns out of it myself. In a brewery alone, I can re reuse at least 50% of the water on applications that don't require potable water. In other words, I'm not going to try and make beer from it, but I'm going to, I'm going to use it for washdowns. I'm going to use it for steam vessels. I'm going to use it for general water, um, uh, industrial water process needs and not to make the actual beer. If you want to make beer with it, there's a lot higher percentage. The point I'm making is this is actually beneficial to hydro areas. And guess what? It's not just in California. Look what's been happening with the Mississippi now. Look, New Orleans is being invaded by brackish water. Why? Because we've had a huge drought in the Midwest and the Ogallala Aquifer is dropping. Um, and once the Ogallala Aquifer is gone, it will take 600 years to come back. So this is precious water. We need to start thinking about that. So this is very, very good for that purpose. Uh, H. Patel says... Are you supplying both water and water treatment or just the latter? Okay. The default for businesses is to keep getting their water from the city. Why? Because it's easy. Now, often the water needs to be improved. We um, have clients. We have a high-end hotel chain. We've done, now done six of their hotels in the last uh, three years on their incoming water. Why? Because they don't want to just put clean water in a bottle on the dresser. They want it to be in the shower. They want it to be in the restaurant everywhere. So we do improve the water incoming, but our 99% of our focus is on the dirty water. If somebody really has a problem getting clean water, we'll help them with, they can dig a well and we'll help them clean that water. But that's not currently the problem. Uh, people generally able to get water from the city because it's a simple water pipe. It's not a sewage, sewage line. And what happens to the solid waste? Really good question. And uh, I would say, just like the waiter said, not my table. <laughs> Okay, if you are, for example, that, that Munson Point set up where they're treating their own waste and there's no sewage anywhere and they cannot send the waste anywhere, there'll be a sludge tank. And that sludge tank gets emptied out once a year, truck comes by, empties it out. Why can you do that? Because wastewater is 99.99% water and the solids content is very low. So you can just use a sludge uh, approach. Now, there's people out there who want to use that sludge for energy and so forth. That's kind of out there. That's That'll be a, a ways yet. There's easier targets for saving energy than trying to burn your own waste. But the sludge tank idea is the one that works. All right, so we've kind of used up some of the questions here. So why don't I jump back into what this business looks like with this black swan event, I mean, one in a thousand event that occurred when we connected with a blank check corporation and or we're looking to become a NASDAQ company. I was just on the slide when I, when I, uh, when I unhooked and this shows the profit lines growing and the acquisitions really start kicking in. This is just phase one of the acquisitions to make a huge difference in terms, whereas before the acquisitions, the revenue was in the 30, about 32 million. Now the profits are in 38 million. That's a huge difference. And here's what, if we add all phases of acquisitions and we spend roughly $10 million cash and a bunch of stock on the NASDAQ company, we end up with a very interesting graph, which is that we can get to a billion dollars in revenue 
um, in just four years with a very aggressive acquisition plan. And that's the beauty of the, the water industry does not grow organically very well. Why? It's just like real estate. It takes a while to build these things, takes a while to do the deals. So it's kind of slow moving. But acquisitions rev things up. And so you, if you invest, would have a piece of the company that has more than half of it right now. Number two, you would have direct shares in this. And that, I think, is... Uh, to me, it's the big opportunity to arbitrage an event that we announced formally on the 24th of October, and in less than six months, we expect will come true as a NASDAQ corporation. Now, what will we be then? We will then be the leading mid-range company, the company servicing the mid-range water user that is available for individual investors that's on the NASDAQ. So I think that's a very powerful thing to be. It's early stage still. And it's something that when, once our investors get, ex, get, get excited by it, first of all, we go through a very in-depth presentation and we like to do it one-on-one. -on -one. And number two, once they invest, they do more. So as I said, we're perfectly happy to have smaller investments. Now, I'm a strong believer in crowdfunding. And uh, next year we plan to restart. We had to pause our crowdfunding offering, which is for non-accredited investors in order to do this merger. and uh, But we plan to restart it post the eventual merger, March, April, whatever it is. And that will enable us to raise a lot of money from everybody. Uh, there's some big success stories out there. You've seen Boxable, for example, Nightscope with a K. They, they raise $120 million from crowdfunding. So that's very powerful. Um, Let's take a look a little bit at the operating plan here, if I, because I think I have some time. Yeah, a little, a little bit of time here. And again, please feel free to give me any questions. So how are we going to execute on this? Well, let's take a look at the operating plan. As I was saying, Modular Water Systems intends to introduce water on demand early on to specifying engineers as a preferred set solution. Meanwhile, Origin Clear, the parent company, continues to build this fund. We've, As I say, we've raised $8 million so far for that purpose and another 12 million to go before that preferential round goes away. Uh, acquisitions, the phase one goal will get us to $230 million a year in revenues. Of course, that's planned. Um, and we will use those acquisitions to develop a scrum. Right now we're limited by personnel. We have more business than we can possibly handle. And it's all about the personnel to follow up on it and also to get in-house manufacturing onshore, meaning in the US, and to scale up our product line. I would like, and this is this does not happen in the water industry. A customer comes and says, oh, I would love to, um, uh, an engineer will say, um, um, I need to have a need for a 10,000 gallon per day system, containerized, and it needs to be blah, 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 whatever the specs are, uh, when can you deliver it? Well, we have one right now. That answer is not the state of the art right now. That's not where the water industry is. They got to go and say, okay, we'll do it. And we'll give us 120 days, 180 days, and it'll be built. Where, where we can go with funding is because these are all modular. They're all standardized. They're all just like mobile homes. We're able to eventually start warehousing them. And that's going to be a huge opportunity. Technology plan, first acquisitions. Obviously, we've got to build a network. Uh, with a whole, it's it's like building a a, um, a municipal utility, but in the private level. Get local support companies, and it's just like Tesla's supercharger network. If you've lined up all the local companies to support you, then that's the edge you have over other people. And eventually, you plan to take water on demand and license it to financial capitals to do for that. For, for example. Uh, for the Middle East, you'd have uh, a financial uh, partner in Dubai or Qatar who would then finance the water on demand network there, Singapore, Tokyo, whatever. So that's that's the technology plan. Now, as I was saying, here's the offering that I'm talking about, uh, raising capital that water on demand will be able to tap at future date. Now, why is Origin Clear raising the capital? Well, it's very simple. Water on demand right now is in quiet period. It can't do a bunch of fundraising because it's being acquired. And so Origin Clear is continuing to raise the capital on behalf of 
25% share of net profits secured by lien rights on the equipment. Very similar to these master limited partnerships. We call it water like an oil well. And it's the only water as a service investment program on the market. And again, we're offering it by origin clear for future, future funding access by what we expect will be the NASDAQ company. Institutional funding, we'll get to, get to it. Um, and what's great about it is that because we don't sell the machines, this is not a widget selling business. We put the machines out and make them work in return for a service revenue, in return for annual recurring revenue, ARR, right? We will then have hard assets to fund against. But I want to repeat, we are really, really, really focused on the retail investor. We think there's a lot. In the aggregate, there's more money out there in America through regular investors than all than Wall Street because there's so, there's so many of us, right? All right, who, who, who are we? Let's talk a little bit about that. If we've got a few more minutes. Uh, I myself came up through the dot-com. Um, that video was very interesting talking about the uh, year 2000 crash um, and went through that. Um, and I had a lot of fun, lots of, lots of um, disruption. And I brought that disruption mentality to the water industry. Tom Marchesello came out of the US Air Force also has been a banker, uh, done a huge amount of business uh, on the buy side, and also worked um, to develop actually in 2013, the early Bitcoin trading on the Chicago Merck. And he's a um, very strong chief operating officer. Ken Berenger helped me create Water On Demand. He is brilliant. He is who you will talk to about this investment. And he is a, a whiz at uh, banking and uh, corporate finance. Prasad uh, Ter is our uh, amazing CFO. He's been showing his his worth in this merger. Believe me, it was a lot of sleepless nights to make this thing happen. And he's been super, super um, strong. Dan Early is the brilliant guru who we brought on in 2018 to start a division from scratch. And that's what all that money we raised helped pay for to where now it's really booming. He's now, uh, you know, really starting to move into the beyond $4 million a quarter, uh, a year rather, to the $8 million a year level, which is amazing. And this is good old Mark Stevens who came on board in 2015. And he, his company, his division, it's actually a subsidiary, really took off in 2022 and uh, has really made this whole merger possible. And Colin Sherman has built some huge, huge systems, and he's working for us in modular water systems. So that is my presentation. Um, you know, it, if we want to get more granular, the best thing to do is to book uh, a call and discuss it with Ken. I'm always available as well to discuss. All right, that's awesome, and you got a great team there too. No, they're fantastic, and you know, I, I go on, I go on podcasts, and I talk about how until 2018, it was just me, the lone crazy guy. <laughs> and that was my pit was ending up like in a very bad place in 2018, where it was just me running around, like, you know, one hand paper hanger. And, um, I started getting quality people like Dan Early, Mark Stevens, Tom Marchesello, um, Ken Berenger, later Prasad. And personally, I never want to work alone again. It's all about the team. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I grew up in Southwest Virginia where the one gentleman says he lives now. It's a beautiful area hanging out of Virginia tech and, and everything around there. It's cool. He's in Roanoke. Exactly. Oh, he's in Roanoke. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. It's the closest major city to, to Blacksburg, Christiansburg area. Major. Yeah. Cause that's why I do the call. <laughs> I mean, it's not exactly a major city, but beautiful area though. No, I, like I said, Riggs, like when I introduced you, I mean, I love what you guys are doing. I mean, I think, I think it's so cool cause it's such an important industry and, and subject that we just kind of don't think about ever you know it's one of those things just you know we you, you turn the faucet on and the water comes out and you know we're all good but it does become a problem in more and more places and you know like you said with droughts and, and things just change so quickly and so having a solution for that and and finding ways to implement it the way that you guys are doing i think is genius you know to, to generate income just to be able to grow it and then do other things with it in the future so very very cool yeah, I can't wait, you know, to, I, I just, you know, it's been a long time that I've been developing this, but we're only just beginning because once this merger is done, and of course, not guaranteed, but 
you know, we'd really have to screw up to, for this not to happen. Um, once this merger is happening, then we'll have capital to really, really grow this concept. And, you know, once things get in the tornado, they just take on a life of their own, right? That's what happens. And so I would like to get your club in early before the crazy rush while we're still giving these incredibly uh, generous deals, big multiple of origin clear stock, et cetera, because um, I think you'll you'll really look back on that as having been a generational investment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love, well, I appreciate your time here today, Riggs. I don't, I don't see any other questions. Here's maybe one coming in the Q&A. Wow. Okay. So, uh, Kayphone, that is a very technical question. And um, I can tell you this. We are technology agnostic. What we work on is how about we pull it away from the city? And now you can control. We have a case study on, for example, um, how we improve impact of greenhouse gases by doing so. We already have that white paper under modular water systems under white papers. Secondly, the reuse, being able to use that water again and again. You know that the US, Israel re recycles almost 90% of their water. The US, 1%. This is a scandal. And why are we going to build multi-billion dollar um, you know, um, desalination plants when we could just use the water we have better? So that's what that's about. Uh, minimum Anonymous attendee says, uh, what's the minimum you can invest in? Like I say, if you're accredited, we're flexible. It's technically, it's a $100,000 unit, but we'll break that up for you. Because again, you will fall in love so much. You will, I think, you'll, historically, people have invested multiple times because you know it's a good experience for them and so uh i'm out of time but i would play a wonderful testimonial by one of our uh, investors saying exactly that yeah very cool how long um how long do you see Riggs kind of keeping this open in the form that you have it now with with the offering you have now like you think you'll have this through the rest of the year into next year is it you know another month and then you guys are moving to the next phase like what's kind of your time frame well, remember that we're raising money on this, um, the, the, the secured water offering, we're raising money right now. You've got $12 million to go. I would say it's going to go on for quite a while, but the multiples are designed to drop down. There's only a limited number of investors for each range. Okay. So you just, it's going to be open for a while, but it's going to get, as we develop more and more credentials, it'll be less and less generous. So that's kind of how, how that is. And remember also we're raising money through with certain select investors with promissory notes if they're interested in that. And so again, that means that this will be over for quite a while, but it will not be as generous. Okay, cool. I love it. And I'll be in touch, Riggs, um, just to see what else we can plan to kind of get this in front of more people. Um, this is a great platform right here with about, I don't know, 50 some people on today. We get it on our YouTube channel. A lot of people watch it later on. Um, so I'll, I'll make sure that we put Ken's contact information. If you're watching the recording right now on the YouTube description. So uh, the next step from here would be to reach out to Ken Berenger's, get a call scheduled with him. Um, I'll put that in the chat box one more time. If you are not ready for a phone call, feel free to email them, invest at originclear.com. And then of course, if you want to kind of learn more, uh, you know, watch a, a second presentation, maybe get a little more in depth. Uh, uh, Rig said he's doing that on Thursdays. Uh, so you can register for that also. It's originclear.com forward slash CEO. And I'll put all of that in the description as well. So those will be next steps is to get on the phone with Ken, talk through your situation, you know, which one of those offerings makes sense for you, you know, how much and, um, and get yourself started in, in that manner. And then Riggs, uh, like I said, I'll be in touch with you and Vendy to see uh, what else we could set up. Cause I think it's an awesome offering. And I, I love what you guys are doing. And I love the forum and I really appreciate the chance. This is a super, super audience you've got. And, um, we were, we're happy to talk more in the briefing. Like I say, I bring up all the comments and we have a great time. All right. Awesome. Well, I appreciate your time today, Riggs. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Enjoy your day. Yes, you too. All right, guys. We'll see you uh, next week, next Monday, uh, same time, 1 p.m. Eastern. If you need anything throughout the week, give me a shout. Um, if you're not, if you're new to Private Money Club, maybe still a free member looking for any coaching, uh, we have our accelerator coaching class starting next Monday. Uh, so one week from today, the next accelerator coaching group starts. So make sure you get in on that. We have some really cool discounts from the three-day training that we just did. So if you're not in private money club yet, definitely schedule a call with our private money club team. 
I'll put the link right there to talk with them about that. And if you are a borrower uh, and you're a premier member and you have opportunities, don't forget to reach out to me to schedule yourself on Money Club Mondays. And just like Riggs just did, you can come on and present your deals. Uh, what do you have available? So that's available for all PMC premier borrowers. Um, so if you want to learn more about that, just schedule a call on the link I just put in the box. And again, uh, my team has uh, various discounts and combo offerings right now that we're uh, offering uh, to new members uh, until uh, the end of the year right now. So this is kind of a final 2023 push. And then going into 2024, we have all kinds of new uh, development coming out and being released. PMC 3.0 will be coming out sometime Q1, Q2. Um, and at that point, you're going to see a lot of changes start to happen. So lock yourself in uh, with the PMC 2.0. It's going to be the best uh, opportunity and chance for you to ever get involved with PMC. And um, again, highly encourage anybody interested in Origin Clear to schedule a call with Ken. Hopefully you guys all got something out of today. I thought it was absolutely awesome. So thanks again to Rig and, Riggs and, and Vendy for being on here. And uh, give me a shout if any of you guys need anything this week. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.